And that's, a, that's the thing about uh, being a woman in waiting in today's society. Like people judge you based on what you can bring to the table like Kamboa was saying. If you don't have any children, then where are you supposed to speak? Where are you supposed to stand? It comes from the in-laws, it comes from strangers on the street. You can be judged literally by anyone, including people at work, you know, who feel like they can have an opinion about your life just because you're not a parent yet. Hello everyone and thank you so much for taking the time to join us here today at Riverdale. We're all about our stories and we have amazing, amazing guests for you. So without further ado, I think I'll let them introduce themselves because one way or another you must have heard of them, you must have seen them somewhere. So welcome again, thank you so much for taking the time and Hadassah, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. How about you tell us a bit about yourself, who you are? My name is Edita Hadassa Tripp. I'm the founder of an organization called Waiting Wombs Trust. What we do is to create awareness uh, on matters in fertility and reproductive health. We do this in partnership with organizations, individuals, and everyone in our, within our space. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you so, so much for that introduction, you guys. My next amazing, amazing guest is here. I think without further ado, I'll let her introduce herself. So, Kambua. Thank you, Shelley. Okay, um, my name is Kambua Manundumathu. I am a gospel artist. I am a TV host. I am a wife, a mother, a lover of life, a lover of God, <laughs> and all things good. <laughs> all the above. All the above, <laughs> and many more. <laughs> so, we're here talking about our stories, right? And every individual has their own story we all have our journeys that everyone has a path that they walk on um, we'd like you to tell us about your journeys your paths uh, what you stumbled on across the way and then we can see how you know every other path every other journey everybody's to do or my life my story how does that tie into mental health um, why is it important for us to be cautious about our mental health? Why should we look after ourselves? Why should we care about ourselves? You know, why are these things that um, we need to look out for and that are very, very important? So, Kamva, maybe we can start with you. Okay, What's okay. your story? Yeah, <laughs> My story um, and how I tie into Hadassah is that I walked the journey of um, infertility for seven years and um, yeah I think it's just basically having the, the, all the uncertainty that came with that conflicted with my desire to have children to start a family and everything I had to I've had to overcome as a public figure and having a struggle in the limelight um, and I think just overcoming first of all dealing with external pressure but also dealing with pressure my own personal pressure of my timelines and goals and um, feeling like at some point that I was getting older and nothing was happening um, or wanting to knowing how much my husband loves children and and seeing how the situation was so um i you know eventually and i thank god that he blessed me with a an amazing baby boy uh, but i think that the journey has changed me so much and that's where i connected with hadassah um, because of waiting rooms trust that there were times when i couldn't i didn't have the courage or the voice to stand up for myself uh, but the, and there was a community of people who stood up for me so um i've learned a lot of those things on my journey along the way and also just gotten to meet really really amazing people on the waiting journey thank you so much for sharing hadassah you know that's how come came to know about you because of waiting rooms trust 
Yeah, so what's your story? Why waiting rooms? Um, I'm married to a great guy. And we've been married for 13 years now. 13.7, 13 point, you know, those two whatevers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we've been trying to have a child for the period. We're still waiting on God. That is where the waiting part of the womb's trust comes in. Uh, I battle with endometriosis. So I've had four surgeries to try and deal with endometriosis, adenomyosis, cysts, and fibroids. But here I am alive, mm -hmm. healthy, and just thankful to God that out of my pain, a community was born. And that is what Waiting Rooms Trust is all about. We met Kambo on the streets, social media streets, when <laughs> she was being bashed and all, and we said, that is one of one being attacked. Let us run and rally behind her. So basically that is my story, still waiting, and now we're out there just creating awareness, supporting, empowering, and reminding everyone in our space that they're actually still special and complete with or without children. Mm -hmm. So you two ladies have had such a amazing, should I say amazing, interesting, stressful journey? Yeah? <laughs> it's not been easy. So, you know, when you talk about struggles, your struggle in the limelight, when you're talking about, you know, battling endometriosis, cysts and all this, what, are, what was some of the things that you were was going on in your head? You know, like what are some of the things you were struggling with? Did you have any self-esteem issues? Did you have any stress issues? Or were you just, you know, let's not think about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, you go come on. Okay. <laughs> Well, for me, it was just so easy. I was just gliding through it. Oh I'm kidding. <laughs> There's nothing easy about it. Um, I, I think that I um, I wouldn't say that I was struggling with my self-esteem, but I did feel like um, there were many spaces where in it was said and it was unsaid that I didn't belong or I, I, I wasn't um, enough to be in those spaces because I, I wasn't a mom. So it affected my, um, I'd say my voice. It, 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 it shut me down in some ways. Um, and some of those spaces were just social media where you cannot contribute to this conversation because you don't have children. And I think the stigma that comes with not having children is so huge, especially in um, our society in Kenya, in Africa, where we feel like a woman is not valuable unless she has brought children to the table. So I have many instances where I felt like I, um, I started to, I questioned my self-worth sometimes because I was like, okay, so what if I never have children? Does that mean that I will always not be um, welcome in certain spaces or I cannot speak in certain, I cannot have a certain authority in certain spaces? So those are the, those were the ups and downs that I've, I had to deal with and um, and now that I have children I still for me it's still something I ask for why is it that you feel that this woman is less than because she doesn't have children and wanting to change that narrative as far as um, you know children are a plus <laughs> you know they're a plus Kamboa is a whole person as I am, but it's, it took me a long time to get to a place of fully accepting that I am I'm, I'm okay and I'm enough. And that if the children come, they'll be awesome. But even if they don't come, I'm okay. Yeah. That's, that's true, you are enough. Yeah. And Waiting Wombs actually did something about yeah. being enough. That's right. Yeah, so what is that like? Um, I guess first just uh, something we do to, call, to remind ourselves that we're special and complete like Kambua has mentioned because looking back uh, mostly after all I, I mentioned that I have had four surgeries after each surgery I had an issue with my image because I had a big tummy trying to recover from something that felt like a CS yeah. but again it's just to remove growths and fibroids and all so every time I'd look at my scars and ask myself if I'd wish that if only they were not related to my medical issues but to maybe children, that would have been awesome. And then I also struggled with uh, fitting in to some groups for sure. <laughs> like even in church setup when you have 
um, meetings, like couples meetings, and the discussion is about children, how to become an awesome mother and father you're thinking. I have a cat at home, I have nieces, but this is more personal, you know. So yeah, there's a bit of struggling with that, and it took me a while to get to a point where I'd get up and tell myself, Hadassah, you're special, you're complete, and you are enough. And that's, it. that's the thing about uh, being a woman in waiting in today's society. Like people judge you based on what you can bring to the table like Kamboa was saying. If you don't have any children, then where are you supposed to speak? Where are you supposed to stand? It comes from the in-laws, it comes from strangers on the street. You can be judged literally by anyone, including people at work, you know, who feel like they can have an opinion about your life just because you're not a parent yet, you know? And given that there's so many women, that's why your trust is here. Like there, there are many women who actually need waiting, um, the waiting womb's trust. There are many women who are still waiting. There are many women, families actually, couples who still don't have children. And like you said, you feel like you don't fit in. You're looking at your body and you're thinking, why don't, why, why don't these scars mean something else? Why do they mean one particular thing? You're dealing with pain. You know, you're dealing with uh, trying to figure out where you're supposed to stand. You know, all these things are mental issues, by the way. They're mental issues because if you're not looking at them, you'll end up feeling worse about yourself. If you're not secure with who you are, if you're not sure about yourself, if you don't believe that you're actually enough, that you're perfect just the way you are, it doesn't matter that, you know, you're still waiting, it doesn't matter that your blessing hasn't come along, that right now on your journey, you are the best version of yourself. I'm